I have something extraordinary to show you. This lens feels like it transforms everything I film with it into a movie, and I'm going to show you why. This is the Sure 35mm T2.9 anamorphic lens. Now there's a lot of things I love about this lens, but there's one thing that I don't. I'm also going to show you how to de-squeeze this footage in DaVinci Resolve. This lens is a game changer. Every frame you capture with it feels like you're behind the camera of a Hollywood film. The compact size and lightweight design of this lens allows me to capture movie-like footage anywhere, anytime. With its 35mm focal length and aperture of T2.9, this lens immerses you into a widescreen world. It delivers breathtaking lens flares and dreamlike bokeh, adding that extra touch of cinematic magic to your shots. Its precision engineering and durability make it a reliable companion on your filmmaking journeys. So here are a few personal experiences and thoughts on this lens that brings the magic of movie making to your hands. And by the way, Sure did send me this lens, but no money exchanged hands. Everything in this video is genuinely how I feel about it. Immediately right out of the box, I found this lens to feel super durable and the focus and aperture rings are extremely smooth. This lens is fully manual, so there is no autofocus. For me, I'm so used to the autofocus, so when I actually put this on my camera, I felt like there was a piece of me missing because I depend on autofocus so much. But I like to see the positive in everything. When I actually started to use it, I kind of found that I was framing things and getting different compositions and my brain was actually working differently than when I have autofocus. It's kind of cool because it is pushing me out of my comfort zone. It has a T-stop range of 2.9 to 16. There is no image stabilization, this camera does have in-body stabilization, but with that said, if you use the active stabilization, sometimes you can see some warpiness in the corners of this lens. And so I typically keep this on the lowest stabilization setting or just completely turn it off. Also, this lens is surprisingly sharp. It's almost too sharp. So in post-production, I actually add a little bit of blur in my color correction and color grading process. Also something that really surprised me when I opened up the box is how tiny and light this lens is. It's made out of aluminum and carbon fiber, and it fits right in my camera bag with all my other lenses super easily. It keeps my camera rig light, and this also can go on drones. It's available on a bunch of different mounting systems as well, as you can see. Something that makes this lens extremely unique is the bokeh and the lens flare. This lens comes in two different flare options. You can get the traditional blue, which you'll see in a lot of sci-fi movies, but I opted for the natural flare because I wanted to use this for all types of filmmaking. This is great if you live in a city, if you want to shoot music videos, landscape, if you film pretty much anything, this lens is for you. This lens is just very specific in its look. It actually has like a pinhole distortion, which is usually the complete opposite of what spherical lenses have. So it isn't perfect. And I'll also show you how to do the lens correction later in this video. It's a 35 millimeter anamorphic lens, but it actually translates to a 22 millimeter spherical. I was actually a little bit surprised with how wide this lens is. It has a T-stop range of 2.9 to 16. Something to also keep in mind, since this lens has a 1.6 squeeze factor if you put it onto a say an a7s3 this has a 16 by 9 sensor so it's going to look distorted and there's no de-squeezing on the a7s3 there is on the fx3 and there's also de-squeezing options on monitors and that's why i have this set up here because i can de-squeeze the footage in order to film and get the framing correct if you don't have that option it's honestly not that big of a deal if you're just looking through the back of your screen it is kind of weird and it takes some time to get used to but i do recommend either getting an external monitor or shooting on a camera that has a de-squeeze option now as you've heard there's a bunch of things i love about this lens and the image it creates but there's one thing that i really don't like about it and that is the minimum focusing distance if you want to get a shorter minimum focusing distance you can buy something called a diopter but the only problem with doing that is say if you balance your gimbal well you're gonna have to put this on and then rebalance your gimbal it's really annoying. So if I'm filming with my gimbal and I have this lens on here, I typically won't ever use this diopter because I just am more of like a run and gun type of guy. The other time when I use this lens, I'll actually put my a7S III in a cage. Then I can just swap this in and out really quick. The minimum focusing distance is about three feet. So if you're trying to focus on this plant over here, that's as close as you can get. Now we're gonna add the diopter. By the way, I've linked these down in the description. This is the Vivitar Series 1, and this is the Level Plus 1. All right, now that I have the diopter on, I'm going to move the camera closer so you guys can see how much closer I can get to the subject, creating more bokeh in the background. 
So adding the level one diopter, this allows you to get about a foot and a half closer to your subject. The only downside is, is that once you've added a diopter, it takes away your infinity focus. So you can't focus on something really far away. You have to stay within a certain distance of your subject. Therefore, you kind of are limited when you use the diopter. For those of you who are wondering what my filter stack is, let me break it down for you. So my 85 and my 24 to 70 is an 82 millimeter thread size. So I needed to get an adapter, also known as a step up ring. And this is converting the 58 millimeter threads on this Sioux Ray lens to 82 millimeters. Whoops. <laughs> Next, what I put on is more of a creative look filter, and that is the Tiffin Glimmer Glass 1. This blooms out the highlights and adds a cinematic look to the video. I love that sound. Next is more of a functional filter. This helps me control the exposure in the videos. And that filter is called an ND filter. I specifically use the Peter McKinnon Variable ND 2. It's the two to five stop. I've never really needed the five to nine stop. Therefore, I only have this ND filter. And then like I mentioned earlier in the video, I do have a diopter, which is basically a magnifying glass for your lens. So when I attach this to the lens, I take off my filter stack, I screw it directly onto the lens, and then I take my filter stack and screw that to the diopter. So once you've imported your anamorphic footage, it will look like this by default. It'll look stretched and not correct. So what I found to be the best way, which there are multiple ways to do this, but what you'll wanna do is highlight all of the clips that you want to de-squeeze. In this case, I'm just gonna use this one clip because I've already done the de-squeeze on these other clips. So either highlight all of the clips or just select the one clip, right click on it, come up to clip attributes, and then you'll see the default here, pixel aspect ratio to be square. You'll want to click on the dropdown and select custom. Then type 1.6, click OK. Then what I like to do is apply my color correction and color grade. Then in order to do some lens correction, I'll come back to the edit page and over here on the right hand side, you can scroll down under the inspector, make sure you have video selected and you can select lens correction. If it's not open, click on it. It'll open and drop down. What I have found to look pretty good is turning this distortion down to negative point one. When using this lens, it sort of feels like a specialty lens. I really like the way that I film with it and the way it's changed me as a creator. Therefore, this lens is an awesome addition to anyone's kit looking to expand their creativity and the look of their videos. It's actually relatively cheap too. It's only 1300 bucks. And if you actually click the link down in the description, there's a coupon you can use as well. So make sure to do that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.